easy with some patchy rain or drizzle in places and a minimum temperature of 7 Celsius, which is 45 Fahrenheit. Friday will stay rather cloudy across Norfolk with winds gradually strengthening throughout the day. The cloud will also be thick enough at times to produce some further rain or drizzle. And uh, a quick look at Saturday, wet and windy on Saturday with the rain turning heavy at times. Sunday and Monday will become colder but staying windy with heavy blustery showers and some sunny intervals. This is BBC Radio Norfolk and it's five past six on a Thursday. The Scrimmage with Chris Gorham and Rob Butler on BBC Radio Norfolk. the scrimmage on BBC Radio Norfolk and Rob but Butler is back with us after a couple of weeks away and you missed that Liverpool match didn't you Rob? Did I? I thought I'd tell you, I don't tell you what happened. <laughs> sorry, I've seen plenty of five falls so now. Sorry. Right. Yeah. What, was, what was it like missing the uh, one of the one of the most uh, incredible games in Carrow Road's 80-year history? I know we lost; it was disappointing, but you, you must have thought, "Oh, all the ones to miss." Well, you know, we lost. So at the end of the day, I mean, I'd take a one-nil yeah. over that any day if we won. Yeah. Any day. Yeah. It's the, as Chris Sutton said, it was the best worst game I've ever seen. The best worst game we've ever seen. Thanks for that, Rob. Uh, with us tonight, Norwich City legend Grant Holt issues a come and get me plea. Uh, now that he's left Wigan and tries to stay out of our pundit prison, we celebrate the return of Dad's Army by finding out how Blackburn Rovers are getting on with all their Norwich City old boys and the view from the villa ahead of Saturday's trip on Saturday. And we'll also be asking why, uh, with your help. Uh, Rob, just explain how everyone can get in touch with us. They can text us, 81333, start the message with the word Norfolk. They can tweet us, use hashtag scrimmage. Give us a call, 01603 617321. And tonight, we are live live no less on Facebook I wonder what you were fiddling with so basically we're on Facebook we're live um, it's all, on, right, all yeah. on camera yeah you have to just go and find me on Facebook obviously just search for my name the only problem is and Holty's with us next to me is I don't know how to get the camera so it's the right way up so we're sort of on the side at the minute but um, if you can see that there look so uh, there you go so sorry about that we are trying to get it fixed but well, we are live on it give a wave Unless yeah, you do that, that Rob. So right. he's going to just yes, turn sideways. So, so we've got go. we've got to do like um. On so we've got a half-hearted Facebook. Yeah, night. we're half-hearted. Yeah, that we, is, that's that's scrimmage all over. No, no, no. As we always say on the scrimmage, Holty, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing the Rob Butler way. <laughs> well, so, like, it's, it's a new thing. We've so got, it's we've got a new 40 thing. viewers already. Right. So 40 people are watching us online sideways. Yeah, Excellent. they're all going like that. If you're gonna, if you've they're got neck clever problems, to turn go, and see, around, go and see Tim Shepherd. He'll sort your neck out <laughs> is it, after. Is it a bit like um, Question of Sport in the eighties? Yeah, where they, they used to get a picture board of um, somebody falling off a horse or something, and they used to think it was funny to bend a, bend sideways and have a look at it like that. It's, it's like exactly that. like that. Excellent. Yes. Well, you've heard that Grant Holt is with us, uh, and uh, we've also got an Norwich fan, uh, Danny Tanty, with us, who's uh, a local footballer of some repute as well, aren't you, Danny? Do you want to list your former clubs? Blimey, uh, was uh, Fakenham, Thetford, Galston. Sheringham, St Andrews when I was younger, but yeah. Real Madrid, something. you forgot Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Multi, <laughs> <laughs> do you want to uh, list your former clubs? <laughs> wow, I've got an hour. <laughs> How long have you got? <laughs> but the fact is, you, you're without a club at the moment. Yeah, on the door. We're going to have, um, yeah. you've come to an agreement there, so what, what's the plan? I don't know. I don't know, actually. <laughs> Can you, I was hoping you'd tell me, but I don't know. I'm just waiting, just sitting back. I've kind of been away for a while now obviously with being up at Wigan and the family obviously I think everyone knows now the family's been back here probably nearly three months now so I've been away and, and travelling up and down and I haven't seen much of the, the kids lately so um, came to an agreement with Wigan on Friday which we, we knew was coming um, and just kind of sitting back and see what, what gets offered and, and see what I fancy really but you want to keep playing though? yeah I want to keep playing yeah well I want to try and keep playing Good. so as long as someone wants me to play I'll be playing but as I said I'm just we had a week off and just trying to see the kids I haven't seen them for a while and, and just enjoy their time and stuff and and um, I say I'm open by next week and we'll have something in the pipeline. There must be offers on the table. I know you can't say too much, but I mean, are there offers on the yeah, table? Yeah, there's, there's offers. There's... <laughs> yeah. Why are you laughing? I don't know. Just nothing. Carry on. All right. Now, yeah, there's offers. There's people saying stuff and, and trying to do stuff in the background. And I've just said to everyone, just come and show me what you've got, and then I'll, I'll decide. I'm not got no got no real preference. What do you look for when you look for a new club? That's a good question. I'll just that's a good question. Well, though, okay, we'll let him answer it first. <laughs> we'll find out whether it was or not. <laughs> um, I'm trying to look at it the, the way I was when I left Nottingham Forest. Um, we'd just gone up to the Championship, 
just got promoted and I kind of sat back and let everyone give me the offers and then decide which which one I, I thought, yeah, that, that's good for me. Um, and that was Shrewsbury at the time and, and that didn't work out too bad for me. So that's what I've said. I'm not, I'm not taking anything for granted. I'm not discarding anything. Uh, I'm going to look at everything, look at it properly, sit down and discuss it with, with certain people and decide what I want to do. So if we've got any uh, managers listening to us, which I probably haven't, but you never know, is, is this a come and get me plea? Are you available? Are you open to offers? Well, I'm open everyone knows. It's, it's been documented enough <laughs> that I'm available, so I'm open that uh, people know that already. As I said, I've had discussions and, and, and stuff in the pipeline, but this week I've said I just want to spend time with the kids. I haven't seen them for... A, quite a few weeks on a longer term basis normally a day here day there so I thought I'll just have a week off and, and get all the jobs that I need done that Mrs Holt's been telling me to get you to game on Saturday you if you want <laughs> can you? Yeah. yeah who for? Uh, well I'll make a call you, I'll, I'll, see anyone. I'll see what they can offer you just anyone yeah. <laughs> so you have anyone from St Andrews to Fakenham yeah. 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 yeah well I've done the non-league anyway I've done all that <laughs> we've got a cold day it was a good question though Rob. thanks, thanks. we it did get a question as well just, from... just, just, that was a good question thanks well we, we just uh, we did get a question from our friend David Lee as well from Hong Kong I know he, he tweets you a lot and he's a great lad uh, Holt he, he wants to know I mean you're saying you still want to play he wants to get you back at Norwich as a coach is that something for the future maybe yeah, possibly in the future, but as I said, it's it's one of them things at the moment. It's not something I'm looking to do at this present time. I've I've got I'm in the middle of doing all my badges and stuff, and and that'll probably be by next year. I'll probably have my my air license and stuff, and that's when I'll probably be looking at doing little bits and and getting in. But at the moment, I still want to play football. It's about as long as you can do it, as long as you can get out and play football. It's the best thing you can possibly do. Now there is an elephant in the room on the scrimmage today, and that's not just Rob Backman's yeah, holiday. It is um, Tommy has sent us a tweet already. He says, "Please ask Grant Holt about the hideous Ipswich rumours." <laughs> what is the put it to bed, Holty? I'm telling you, I'm well, serious. These these rumours that just keep coming and keep coming, and then everyone's uh, put me with everyone at the moment. But as I said, as I'm as I'm unaware, I'm, I'm not going to be switch at this. Oh, he's at playing this being coy oh, there. Okay, and... that's a bit like when Paul Lambert came in and said, "Well, they'll be other good managers." Just a, a day before he resigned, I couldn't. I, there's no one. That, I think everyone knows. You couldn't that, do it. You I couldn't think there's no. I think everyone knows by the way I, the way I tweet and the way I do stuff and the things I've said and the things I've done. I don't think there's any way in the world that um, I don't think for one I definitely don't want to go there and I think for two oh, you just said it what did you just say it in the first place <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to see what you do and we've got people from Facebook watching us so I just yeah. wanted to see you squirm for about a minute now but I think everyone knows with the way I tweet and the way that, that, that I you am. hate them well, yeah, and, uh, and I don't. And to be honest, I don't think they'd really want me down the road anyway. So I think no. it's a bit of a, That's a no go. Just score own goals every week—that'd be brilliant. <laughs> so here's the, here's the thing we really want you to call in about today, other than um, questions for Grant Holt and, and Danny, who, who are with us in the studio here. Um, BBC Sport has—I think this is a really interesting thing—they've compiled the most searched for why questions in the UK for Premier League clubs from the start of the season. So I don't, I don't know how they've done it, but they must have got in touch with one of the search engines. And every time somebody asks a question about a football club that starts with the word why, they've worked out which ones um, come around most often. So for Norwich City, the top five why questions are, in fifth place, why did Alan Bokit leave Norwich? Uh, this is what people have been searching for on the internet. Four, why did Norwich sell Bradley Johnson? Three, why is Norwich wearing black armbands? <laughs> Yeah, they must have some people don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Two, why is Lewis Graben suspended? Oh, we all know. We that. all know why that was. Yeah. And the, the the top most, I guess it's Google, but the top most searched question about Norwich City since the start of the season is why are Norwich called the Canaries? Yeah, <laughs> that's what everybody wants to know now cool. in the Premier League. So those are all good questions. But we've already had one brilliant question from uh, Rob Butler on the program Thank uh, you. tonight, which we've you know we, we ask you to follow that now. We want yeah. you to um, ask us your why questions about Norwich City, don't we? <laughs> Yes, we do. Get in touch, usual way. Hashtag scrimmage, tweet us, text us, call in. If you've got a good question, I mean, you might want to ask a hold to your question. Mm. 01603 61732. There's no... There, we, we will try and answer everything, yeah, won't but we? there is one rule. Every, any, any question you send to us has to start, why? Yeah, of course. Why, why this, why that? Yeah. Uh, Joe, for example, the one I often get from people who know uh, Carrow Road is, why is the snake pit called the snake pit? Can you answer that, Rob? Well, I used to sit there, I still yeah. do on occasion... I think it's just because it's like, you know, it's it's dangerous to be, you know, it's dangerous. It's where all the dangerous Norwich fans are. Tance, you got any thoughts on that? Because you're a Bartley boy, aren't I'm you? I'm a Bartley boy, yeah. So, well, I'm what not at that age yet to go in the snake boat. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> what, too, too old or too young? <laughs> Whoa, too young. <laughs> <laughs> so, any ideas from you? I think it's just because it's like, you know, the yeah, snakes. It's quite venomous, yeah, isn't venomous. It? Yeah, yeah, it's venomous. Yeah, that's the Okay, yeah. so that's it's why it's swearing. Word, venomous. Yeah. Uh, from um, this one here, why do. This is a good question, I think. I'm going to put this one to Holty. Why do Norwich fans always have to have a scapegoat for every occasion? Yeah, agreed. And that one comes from John Punt. 
Everyone likes a scapegoat, don't they? <laughs> so Everyone not... loves to blame one person for it... all going wrong. So it's not just Norwich fans? No, like players that. do that as well. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I've took, a, I've took a few out a few times. <laughs> and so what, but what is it? What? Because what, now, uh, you know, dare I say, a name, a good friend of yours, someone I respect as well, Russell Martin, he gets a lot of stick. Yeah. You can't, can't hide from it. No, you can't hide from it. It's his turn at the moment. It's his yeah. turn at the moment. John Ruddy had his turn and, um, not so long ago, and it was John, all John's fault and everything, and then now it's Russell's. But, People just look for someone to, to, to blame. I've said this before, it's not just one individual, it's a whole group. It's from the manager to the staff to, to the players to, to everyone's involved in it. No one at the the only trouble is it, it doesn't really concern the players and the manager inside the football club because no one no one looks for scapegoats so, and no one blames other people. They just get they they realise that it's a, a job and everyone's in it together. So I think it's just fans in general they try and look for something where it's going all going wrong. But as I said, you, you at the moment, they're, they're all over Russ, and then you, you watch the game the other night, and there's goals flying in left, right, and centre. So you can tell it's just not one individual; it's, it's a full group. It is. So why? Uh, that's what we want. Got to another hear. two. Got another two. Should we well, in? Just do, do one more. Now, do right. one more. Now. Well, it's the same question. Uh, Tommy says, "Why do ex Norwich players love coming back to live here later in life?" And Scott said, "Why have Grant, has Grant Holt moved back to Norfolk?" Because my wife wanted to. And because they, you're, you're loved. No, it's good. It's good. No, it's you good. like it as well. You loved your love. Yeah, team. no, it's yeah. it's great. Let's that. be honest. You're not the, the feeling towards you in Norfolk because of what you did for Norwich City. You're not going to get that anywhere else, are you? No, I'm not. That's, the, that, that's, that's great. And yeah, that's great. Drinks. No, it is. It is. It is great. But as I said that's not the, one of the reasons I came back. The, the reason I came back is because the, the wife loved being in, the children loved being. It's a it's a great life. As I said, I've been. Uh, I think everyone knows I'm loyal to Carl and I like the players. But yeah. there's a, a lot more going on. And it's a lot better for me to be down here. It's got electricity here. That's what. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what, he's had a you know digger a, dig yeah. a wheel called the yeah. Wheel of Fish yeah. while I was in the room. Yeah. We, we're chugging on oh, And now he's had to go to Carlisle yeah. being flooded with no electricity. Yeah. I didn't say anything. All right, right. Okay. that's terrible. Yeah. Right. They've it's had terrible. a hard time in Carlisle. Yeah. So just to, right, now, look, now you asked, you asked a good question earlier on. And now, now spoiled. And now, now it's ruined it. I could just start saying, what about Carlisle getting to the fourth round of the FA Cup? Let's move on. Great club. Let's move on. Don't forget your shin pads. Let's move on and talk about. The, yeah, well done, Rob. Let's let's move on and talk about the FA Youth Cup last night. Yes, let's. A, that's one thing we are through to the next round of just. Um, Carrow Road last night, you were there. It was an extraordinary game, wasn't it? Norwich Amazing. beat Middlesbrough 5 4. <laughs> 4 1 down. We're all putting the call out for Adam Drury to come and equalise. Ho, ho, ho. That was the joke of the night. But afterwards, you know, unbelievable. And we got to speak to, to, to a couple of players and the managers. Well. Graham Murty, first time I've had a chance to interview him. And also, we spoke to Louis, Louis Ramsey, who scored an absolute screamer. And he talked us through it. I don't score many, but honestly, when I do, it's a good goal, so. Yeah, it's, it's just I'm just happy to get to get the equaliser there because that really kicked the boys on. You know, like when I got that goal, we really believed we were going to win this, and we did. I've just seen the ball come out, obviously in the air, on the edge of the box, and to be fair, the light in the stadium blinded me. And I've only just seen the ball, so I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to have a go. Caught it on the outside of the boot, swerved out, and then come back in off the post and in. And just I'm just speechless. This is speechless. It's just a great game, you know, and then to score in one of the. Uh, a goal like that in one of the games is just it's just great. A couple of lads were beaten, but most of the boys we knew we like we knew we had the, the ability to beat them. The Gaffer uh, Mertz, he, he just believed in us, he gave us so many like words that we believed in and um, we come out second half and we knew we we're gonna have a game here. I said to them when we came off at the end of normal time and we got into a huddle together I said, I've got nothing to say. I'm taking my words away because I was just all ready to say unlucky, well tried. And now it's there for you if you continue to believe and you continue to show quality. And Louis Ramsey's goal, I stood right behind it. I'd love to take credit for it and it's my coaching, but you can't coach that. It was just an absolutely outstanding finish. And from then on, we have a little smile and a little thought, well, anything could happen. One of our main things in the academy this year is how you create hunger in what is essentially paradise. Young men who've got a lot, they're in a fantastic academy environment, they're taken care of really well. How do we create that hunger? How do we create that drive and that grit? And we, we've come to the conclusion you have to put them to the challenge, you have to put them to the hazard and reveal whether that character's there. And each and every one of them that stepped onto the pitch today showed fantastic amounts of grit, fantastic amounts of character, and for their development, 
I think it could be a watershed moment. So that was some game last night. The, the, the second 5-4 at Carrow Road in the space of a few days. Norwich beat Middlesbrough from 4-1 down in the FA Youth Cup. They'll play Man City away in the next round, which is next round's quarterfinals, isn't it? That's, That's right. right, yeah, last so eight, yeah. We're, we're going well. Now, there was a cracking goal in that game, as you mentioned, and because it was a youth game, we don't have the, the, the commentary of the goal to bring you because we weren't doing the commentary last night. So we thought, do you remember, um, Holt, do you remember in the old days, on uh, the BBC Match the Day Goal of the Month competition when they didn't have commentators at every game. If somebody scored a good goal and they wanted to put it in Goal of the Month, they used to put the commentary on afterwards. I'm not that old. <laughs> Tony Gubber. I know what you mean. Yeah, I, do, I sort so, of dubbed it in. Yeah, yeah. So, but like someone done, Alan, someone done Alan Partridge on Luke um, on Vardy's did, yeah, did they? Exactly. With it, yeah. That sort of thing. So that's what, in, in, in uh, tribute to um, Louis Ramsey, who scored that good goal last night, that's what we've done. We've um, put the commentary on afterwards. to Middlesbrough here. There's no way Norwich are going to come back from this one. They have got a corner uh, though, very late in this uh, FA Youth Cup tie. Let's see whether uh, they can possibly do anything from this. Uh, the ball has come into the penalty area. It's been headed away. Comes to Ramsey. There's no way he's going to shoot from the... Oh, he has! He has! He's put it in the top corner. What an extraordinary goal that is. And it's 4-4. There's no way you could possibly have seen that coming. And that's what it used to be like at the goal of the month. When they put the <laughs> <country> <laughs> do you know what's brilliant? You know that you just do it afterwards because yeah. if anyone else... If that was an actual Norwich match, you'd be screaming. <laughs> not Norwich, and he's a corner. Well, this is this. Yeah. Is this. Uh, he'd been in. This is a corner. Last chance. But that's what it was like. And, and when they used to do it on goal of the oh, month. Oh, surely he's it? not going to score from there. <laughs> oh, yes. 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 Always did it. Always did it. Great goal, though, wasn't it? Oh, a terrific goal. Now, we, 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 we can answer. I, he on? said he was lucky before we went I on said, it. I didn't say it. He's me. listening, Louis. I said... It's a great goal, but you don't mean to put it exactly there where it went. You just try and hit the target. Okay. Well, all right, yeah. Let's uh, <laughs> let's one of our great Norwich City why questions is yeah. why is the area of that of the the ground called the snake pit? And yeah. we said we think it's because the people that sit in there look like snakes or whatever it is that you said, something like that. Yeah. Um, it's <laughs> venomous. Venomous. That was it. Venomous. Let's talk to Karen, who's on the line. She's she can answer this properly for us. Hello, Karen. Hello. You know why the snake pit is so called? Well, I've always been told it's because they put their arms up and out and forward and it looks like a snake coming out of a basket or the ground. <laughs> <laughs> that was what, and I've got friends that sit in there as well. So, yeah, as that. they put their arms up and out, they all do it together, it looks like snakes, right? You know when a, yeah. a man sits on the floor and he plays his whistle and the snake goes... Oh, like, yes, oh. snake charmer. So, yeah, that's it, that's yeah. There. Well, I've, yeah, I've, I've sat there a few years, I've never done that, but Karen, that's a great shout. Well, that good, was what it? I was told, but I'm in the refined Norwich and Peterborough end, so uh, I wouldn't really know. No, really. no, well, we know why that's called that. Uh, so do you take a rug, <laughs> do you have a little rug on your legs at, at the game? Um, no, but we do take refreshments. What, 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 what do you have in your flask? <laughs> oh, I don't take a flask, I buy it. God, I what's your, what's your usual tipple? Oh, just a cup of tea. Cup of tea, can't that's go wrong. Yeah. Karen, thank you. So that's the, it's that and then that is why they call it the snake pit. There Brilliant. Learned something new there. there. I'm just wanting someone to come and tell me it's because someone once got bit by a snake <laughs> in there. It'd be even better. <laughs> We've got Colin on the phone as well, who I think wants to pose a why question. Hello, Colin. Hello. What, what do you want to know the answer to? I want to know why or why the pink outfit for a goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> what, 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 what don't you like? like about it, Colin? Well, it makes it a lot easier for the opposing forwards to know where the goalkeeper is. True, that's true. Excellent. Thank you for that, Colin. Have you, come on, Holty, goal scoring extraordinaire, does that, if the goalie's in bright clothes, that help you? No. I think Move you, on. I think you found what, the, the, all the goals ask on, you're watching the ball tapping them in, so I don't really think from yeah. I think we did put this to the club at the start of the season when these, these new kits came out, and we were told that uh, John Ruddy had uh, let me get this right. John Ruddy had a hand in, de not designing, but in deciding what colour the okay. goalkeeper's outfit could be. And then when it turned well, up... they dropped it. No, well, well, when it turned up, he <laughs> even he was surprised by quite how bright it was. <laughs> yeah. It's That's like, what they it's said, like an they? illuminator pen. Do you remember Alex you know? Neal told us that, didn't he? Before he did. one of, yeah, one he of the pre-season games. He said, yeah, John Ruddy was asked, what colour do you fancy? He looked at a catalogue or something and said, that one. And then when he opened it, he thought, blimey, it's a bit bright. Tim Howard's got the, he had the camouflage one, didn't he? So maybe Colin's theory... 
Yeah, not trying to true. stand out in front of the goal. Well, I think, weight. I think it's obviously John does a lot of work for help for heroes. I think there might be something in that as well. There's something along because he got it on his gloves, hasn't he? So um, there might be something along a charity reason he's done it as well. There so. might be. Let's uh, have the latest travel news. And if you've got any more of your Norwich Why questions, uh, our phone number is 01603 617 321. You can text 81333. Start your message with the word Norfolk. BBC Radio Norfolk Travel. A47, very slow at the moment, westbound. You're still queuing towards the pullover roundabout as you head past Kings Lynn. The queues are all the way back past the Hardwick roundabout. No recent updates on this. Could be a breakdown or an accident. Maybe you could update us. The number, as always, yeah, our travel line number is 0330 123 3551. Have an update later. for your stories for the people's history of pop and now you can hear tales of some of norfolk's treasured souvenirs he saw it he, his eyes nearly popped out of his head and memories from some of the county's most famous gigs the papers had put it the next day that the girls on the front row must have been a mistake of euphoria and i had to to read what it meant and it was totally right you can still share your stories online at phop.co.uk and join us for our people's history of pop special this sunday at 12 on bbc radio norfolk you're part of the bbc it's the scrimmage on BBC Radio Norfolk uh, with Rob Butler, Chris Gorham and our studio guests, the one and only Grant Holt and Danny Tanti as well, uh, talking all things Norwich City. We've got your why questions about the Canaries coming in, but now it's time to do our Pundit Prison, which is uh, our weekly feature where we look at the things that people have been getting wrong about the Canaries. <laughs> We have three contenders. We always try and find three people who've got uh, things wrong about Norwich City, and we've managed it again uh, this week. Our first one is, um, and this is a bit of a, an uh, initiation, isn't it, for our new colleague on the sports desk at BBC Radio Norfolk. He's, he's just started in the last couple of months. He's done a good job. Jay Lawrence, uh, you might hear him on a Sunday morning or, or during the week uh, on, on, on the breakfast programme during the sports news, doing a really good job. But uh, we finally uh, got his first pundit prison uh, suggestion. He was nominated this week for, well, this is what he said. Uh, it must have been the morning after the transfer window, so it must, must have been Tuesday morning. This is what he said. In other deadline day news, Swansea signed former Norwich City manager Leroy Fur on loan from QPR. <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> the former manager. So he's Leroy got the manager's Fair. job, or did he go as a player? <laughs> what did, now, like, while we speak, like, just quickly about Leroy Fair, because there was lots of laughter from Norwich fans when he went to Swansea about relegation, or the, regu the regulator, as someone called him, or the relegator. What do you think about that? No, he's a very good player, isn't he? I'm sure if, if you got the opportunity to have him back, you'd have took him back in a heartbeat. He's a very, very good player. Hasn't really happened to him with QPI. He just couldn't really fit with what they were trying to do, I'm sure. I think Swansea, if they carry on playing the way they play, I think it'll, it'll suit them really, really okay. well. Fair enough. Good signing. Uh, Peter Jury, the, the TV commentator, is your pundit yeah. Well, I was, uh, I was watching the game from over in, in the States, and uh, it was on on NBC, and he was commentating alongside Brad Friedel, who was quite good, actually. It was on NBC, Liverpool v Norwich. And he said, there we go, uh, there's the Norwich bench, Alex Neil there alongside his coach, Grant Holt. <laughs> what with that he horrible wrong... ginger beard? <laughs> he got the wrong halt. He certainly did. So Peter Drury, brilliant commentator, a legendary commentator, almost got that wrong, didn't he? And uh, number three uh, in our pundit prison is Grant Holt, because Grant, you... not Gary Holt. No, this is definitely Grant I'm Holt. Farming this one to Gary Holt. You're, you're in the you're in the pundit prison because you do a program. Oh, on... I know what you're going to say <laughs> on BBC Cumbria <laughs> on a Tuesday, don't yeah. you? Yeah. What time does that program start? Six to seven. Good show. Six o'clock. Yeah. What you wanted to use our line um, from Carrow Road on Tuesday Correct. for a program that starts. What time did you tell us that? Uh, about half five. About half five. <laughs> <laughs> and then the program was on at six. What time did you actually did you actually tell? Um... <laughs> Ten past six. It's a long way up that country. More like a quarter past six. Yeah. But it's my show, so I'm to come in when I want. Okay, that's it. Oh, that's, that's, that's fine. Attitude, but to be fair, it wasn't great because I had to not speak to two people I know at the bottom of the desk, which I feel really sorry. Apologise. I had to rush off. I had to say to two young lads, "Sorry, you can't get a photo because I'm oh, really, really in a rush." Oh no! So oh. I'll apologise to them two young gentlemen right now. Yes. Um, and. I did slag Rob Butler off and say I don't know how he gets up here because it's a long, long way. It is. <laughs> it's a long way up, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. The so that's it. And also, I th do you know what I thought you were going to bring up? I actually didn't think you were going to bring that up. I, th I thought you were going to bring up the fact that there's a guy who's going to buy Carl called Andrew Lappin. And the fact that I called him Simon Lappin. <laughs> did you also <laughs> did <I> say that? <laughs> Brilliant. 
uh, three times. Um, oh, and, and actually, oh, it's because I've been texting Laps in the morning, so for some reason his mind, I called him Simon Lappin three times on night. We did oh, tell the Simon Lappin at Wembley story, we did. didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, where he got lost, and he yeah. kept ringing, kept ringing up Adam Drury trying to find us. Yeah. He couldn't Brilliant. find that, that archway. wasn't enough. He couldn't find Wembley Stadium. Where we were. No, couldn't find Wembley Stadium. <laughs> Brilliant, um, Simon Lappin. So that's all right. I think. Well, that's your, your you're the judge, aren't you, on these things? Well, I can't put Holt in. He's a he's a. Everyone says I say legend too much, but like we Terry Westgate, our friend tweeted and said I'm allowed to call him a legend because he is so who else was it uh, Peter, Peter Drury, Drury and uh, the first one Jay, Jay Lawrence. Lawrence yeah Jay's in he's in He's over there, look. He's, oh, he's, he's, yeah. Yeah, he's doing his yeah. programme. Yeah. It's an easy mistake, though, isn't it? Leroy Fur being a manager, yeah, only 24. Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but Jay, it, he does do BBC Introduced as well, which we have to plug. That is a great show. Yeah. Please listen to that. Yeah, it's a good show. Um, why don't Norwich have the yellow goal nets anymore? Matt Lewin, that's a terrific question. Yeah. That'd be a Danny? Terrific, that'll be the league one, won't it? Would you like to see the yellow nets back as a fan? I, I just won't mind it in the net a bit more regularly. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> Fair enough. Uh, okay. I like the yellow nets. Will that not be league regulation? No, because no, 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 right? Liverpool have red ones, don't they? Do, Do they? they? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure they're not white with a little bit of red on? <laughs> Got red on them. But you they're different. They're, you not, could they're be, not. You definitely could be in your own thing next prison. under prison next oh, week. Well, we'll really Let's get Mark on the phone here. Mark uh, wants to answer the goalkeeper. Hello, Mark. Hi there, just picking up briefly on what goalkeepers were. I can remember that Kevin Keelan always wore green, yeah. and he was very difficult to spot. And I can remember somebody saying something, I think it might have been on Match of the Day, Peter Shilton, when he wore white, mm -hmm. very, very difficult to uh, for a... Um, forward. Yeah, I, I mean, for, forwards used, used to see him, so they knew where not to go, as it were, where not to shoot. So you think this uh, this pink, this bright pink goalkeeper's jersey? That... I don't like it. I I, I don't like it. I, I just think um, it's just so easy for attackers or midfielders on the opposing team to, to spot where the goalkeeper is, and I think that's a disadvantage. I, I think if they went back to uh, Kevin Keenan's green, who knows? It might just save one goal. Let's start the appeal here. Uh, thanks Good for your stuff. call, Mark. Danny, what about this? You're, you're, you're a Norwich fan. I, I came on the air the, uh, this evening expecting us to be talking about defensive frailties and what's causing Norwich's um, losing run at the moment. And we've na we've narrowed it down to the fact the goalkeeper's jersey's too bright. I don't mind it. I don't think Norfolk's ready for a man in pink yet. <laughs> I disagree with that. I disagree with the shirt though because if, if you're a forward, if I seen the pink, it put me off because I'd be thinking, where's yeah? So I'd be try thinking more of where I'm going to do it instead of concentrating mm. it in the ball. So that we're probably if we're looking for reasons for Norwich's poor form at the moment, we're probably looking in the wrong place. Got a new scapegoat. Yeah. The, the, the goalkeeper. Goal yes, it's the scapegoat. <laughs> I blame like the kit man. I blame Riggers. <laughs> um, somebody wants to know why Danny Tanti who's here with us is the spitting image of the Leicester forward Mares. Yeah, something yeah, my mum hasn't that. told me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I like that. We've Let's got... hope he is. If we get some good maintenance, yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just something oh, like a title. Bonus, bonus. <laughs> Liam Hargreaves says, why does that Liverpool game still hurt? Oh, get over it. Come on now, look. It's not as if they have beaten us enough in the last few years. He's yeah. no Suarez. At least no good at He's tough. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Well, got that. Right, uh, here's another one. At the start of the season, Paul McVeigh said we need a point a game to survive. Three points of Villa and we're in credit, says uh, Adam Wright. There you go. So that's still all reasons to be cheerful. That's there, reasons to be say. cheerful. And um, uh, DJ Spinko says his wife, Kim, is asking him in on the Ball City, what is a splendid rush? That's not a why question, so we can't what? answer it. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, good point. <laughs> and Tommy's, <laughs> like been in touch. <laughs> Tommy's been in touch. He says Hull definitely have white half uh, and orange half goal nets. Mm. Well, that's in the lower divisions. Championship for now. Championship, isn't yeah. It? Hey, come on. Think of Snoddy. We love Snoddy. Yeah, yeah. but it's still Hull are in the... They're not and Stevie Premier Bruce at the moment. Let's uh, it's Villa. We don't want to be there next season, and this Villa game on Saturday we don't is, be Villa is, is, <laughs> is, is, is crucial to that, isn't it? Um, Holty, this is a this is a massive game on Villa Saturday. Villa legend Grant Holt <laughs> scored there anyway. Um, yeah, it's massive, massive for them. I was at the game, the home game, and it was it was a bad, good point, good three points for Norwich, but it was a terrible game. I comment to someone afterwards. It's probably the worst Aston Villa team I've seen um, for a long time. And, and it's a must must win for Norwich. I think they've got to go up there and and, and get the three points because it's a poor Villa side in my, my opinion. And if they do that, and that'll I think that'll condemn them, and that'll be one of them out of the way, and, and they put Norwich back where they need to be. But I, I think I think Norwich are going to be fine. I think they've, they've got enough 
to to stay in the division quite comfortably, in my opinion. It's just getting a bit worrying at the moment, isn't it? With Bournemouth now moving five points clear of Norwich, Swansea have started winning games, and Norwich are on this five-match losing streak. So you can see why why fans are getting a bit edgy and I've, why this Villa game now feels feels yeah, huge. It, it feels huge. But we, we've done that a few years, haven't we? We've done it when when I was here. We've done it twice, and we've done it done it last time. But it, I think they're going to be all right. I think they've got enough. I think with with Nair Smith, I think he comes in and gives them a little bit of difference. I think they're starting to the click that the the lads up front are starting to click a little bit. I know we're not scoring the goals that we really want to see at the moment, but I think that in the next few weeks it'll be all right. But it's a tough division. You never know where you're going to win to come from. Are you going up, Danny? Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, uh, I just think we've still got to play Wes. I think on on Tuesday night, I think two older midfield midfielders, Teddy and Malumbu, you'd think that would then allow. The more attacking players to have their impact in, in, in the final third, but your house and is not a wide man, and I just still think that Wes is, is key and creates so much when he plays. People call him a luxury, but they're the people that win your games. Aren't well, they? We, we did have Macca with us, Paul, Paul McVeigh was our commentator, and we were getting a bit frustrated that Norwich weren't doing more to, to rattle Tottenham. And and he said, look, Tottenham are just too good. That's why Norwich lost that game. It wasn't about Norwich being bad. I, Tottenham were just too good. For I them. think they were good in the first half. I don't agree they were so good in the second half. I thought they got to grips with it. I thought first half they sat off them too much. I thought they let Spurs press them too much, and I thought Norwich should have played in, played it a, a little bit forward, a, a little bit earlier to try and get people around the, the big man up top. I thought second half they were better. I thought they pressed a little bit higher, uh, won the ball a little bit back. Um, but I said it just didn't. I think Nair, I think if Nair Smith's header went in at the yeah. time with his little glancer, I think that would have changed the, the whole perception of the, the game. But to be fair, first half they should have been. Out and gone. They were mm. on about the penalty not being a penalty, which it wasn't. But you look at the saves that they made. Harry Kane's one in the corner, the little flick. Any one of them winning the game was over. But they can't th- start games there. No, the thing is, Norwich um, lost to, to Liverpool. And I know they shouldn't have done because they were three one up, but uh, then lost to Tottenham. On the face of it, you lose to Tottenham and Liverpool. That isn't so much of a problem. It's the it's the game before that when they lost to Bournemouth. Mm. They lost to one of the teams around. Them. That, that's what is going to if they don't stay up. That's what's going to be the problem. Isn't yeah, it? they're the games. ones. It's all the games around you. You, you can take points from here and there. Um, but they're the games the most important ones. It's the teams around you. Not getting beat's the main thing. You, you can't get beat from by the teams around you, and you hope you pick up points where you don't expect it. But to do that, and especially at home, they're the games you, you need to win. What well, should we say if Villa have given up yet, Rob? Let's try it. Yeah. Well, basically, uh, we uh, always like to speak to, don't we, Mike Taylor, who's the man from BBC WM, and I asked him if it's sort of all over for Aston Villa. Is this yet another must-win game for them? They've had several last chances. This feels like it's the last of the last chances, um, given that, you know, obviously, if they could win this game, they'd be back to, what, seven points, I think. Uh, so they'd be somewhere a bit nearer. The problem is they haven't looked even remotely like winning any of the other previous last chances they've had. Uh, so hope is not in uh, fulsome supply in around Villa Park at the moment. There's a lot of people already resigned to their fate, indeed, having arguments about how bad next season's going to be. I was going to say, I mean, we, we've spent money at Norwich, Newcastle have spent loads. I mean, we were two of the highest spenders, Bournemouth have spent a bit. Villa didn't sign one player. That Their fans must be absolutely beside themselves, aren't they? Yes. Uh, somebody will write a book about this one day. But th- there are various uh, ways you can analyse that. Uh, you can analyse it in, uh, as Remy Gard was saying the other day, that they tried to bring all sorts of players in, uh, some of whom we didn't heard of, um, but they, they couldn't get it done for various reasons, not least the fact that nobody really wants to join a sinking ship. Uh, so that's clearly an obstacle. And there are various other accusations and fingers being pointed, as indeed Tim Sherwood was pointing fingers before he went, saying that the signing, the signing players didn't have very much to do with him anyway, and that a mythical transfer committee was either doing or not doing the sort of business that brought Villa a whole host of players, 11 new ones I think it was in the summer, uh, none of whom looked ready for the Premier League at the time, and, and not many have particularly stepped forward since. So one, one way or another, it's been a bit of a sorry state as far as recruitment's concerned. Yeah, last time there was real threat of, of uh, relegation for Villa. They went out and spent 20-odd million on Darren Bent. You know, this yeah. time, nothing. I mean, have they given up? Are they resigned to the championship, do you think? It's hard to come to any other conclusion, uh, really. Although, I mean, I suppose the club can't really come out and say, well, we've given up, folks, um, because that, that really would send an awful message. But it, it's hard to think otherwise. Uh, and, you know, you, you can make an argument that says, what's the point in trying to bring in players now for a relegation battle that we're almost certain to lose, we might as well start preparing for the championship. But of course they didn't do that either uh, by not bringing anybody in. So it, it, it's mystifying from that point of view. But look, it, it's 
part of the whole story that Villa's problems haven't started in the last month, or indeed this season. I think most Villa fans would tell you that you can trace back the, the, the line towards this apparent relegation, if that's what it's going to turn out to be. You can date it back two, three, four years. Maybe even you can stretch a line back almost as far as the, the Martin O'Neill uh, time, even when they were getting up towards the top of the table, but the squad always looked a bit thin. You can follow a line through to how they've ended up at this point. It, it, it's shocking to see Villa in that state at the bottom of the table, but it's not a shock uh, that they're ending up in serious relegation danger, if you see what I mean. And Norwich, obviously, coming on there on Saturday, well, I guess, dare I say, expecting to win, hoping to win. Is it just a case of, of, of them go, getting out of the blocks early, shutting the crowd up? Is that the, the usual cliches apply? Well, absolutely. Look, the, the Villa fans have been pretty stoic uh, for the most part. But clearly, look, if they fall behind on Saturday, it's going to be dreadful um, from, from Villa's point of view. There have been flickers that Villa have actually shown in recent times, but then usually something has gone wrong, uh, as it was at West Ham the other night. They started that game quite well, and then Jordan Ayew, the, one of the players who has looked like doing something useful of late, uh, managed to, to knock out a West Ham player, and therefore he's going to be out of the picture for three games. So it's self-inflicted things like that are not helping, and certainly if, if Norwich can get in front, then that clearly isn't going to do anything for Aston Villa. Um, their prospects are bad enough already, but they're very, very fragile. Very, very fragile. Mike Taylor. We always speak to him when Norwich are playing teams from the Midlands. Cause we oh, he's great, and, and Holtz, he knows him well. He's been in here yeah, a few good. times. He's a top he's man. Good. He loves he his speed way as well. He does. He is a top man. What else have we got in terms of the whys uh, from Norwich City supporters? I think I'm enjoying these. Um, why does Alex Neil always say sorta? During his interviews, who? Sorter, Alex Neal. He, he sorter. does. That's sorter. Really not noticed. I think that. that's a Scottish thing. Thanks, Liam, for that one. Um, what else have we got here? Why is there no statue to Grant Holt in Norwich for his hat against Ipswich? We should have one like you know the one in Cluffy in Nottingham. There's one right in the town as well. Yeah, we should have one like that outside Topshop. I think. <laughs> it's not called Top, top shop, shop anymore, is it? It's next. Isn't it? Prime, it's called Prime. Well, Prime, Prime whatever. <laughs> There's loads of shops. Just name all the high street shops. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then you think he's I get the guy with was that with the. The puppet, the puppet man, man right in front of it. Just got him. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> there. Have they got one of them in Carlisle? No, they have puppet, puppet man. man. Maybe, maybe that's I'm missing, the, I'm missing a trick. Maybe that's the, 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 the trick then. Instead of uh, a statue to Norwich, what we do is we have a special Grant Holt puppet made. To yes, to the puppet yeah, just man. to give the former man to do that. Yeah, yeah, just had a message. Way. By the way, if you've just joined us, we're live on Facebook tonight. It's going quite well. We've sorted the camera out. Edvard Jürgen Schweinsteiger. I don't know if that's his real name. He's been in touch. Can you please pass my apologies to Grant for an awkward meeting we had in Wagamama's? I was a bit starstruck, and being in the toilet wasn't the best place to meet your footballing idol. There you go. <laughs> so, so sorry about that. It's all right, don't worry. There you go. That's, yeah. that's a joke there, but I'll keep it to yeah. myself. Yeah, so I think we all did. We're all, we're all working out what we it's can do. So to do with a noodle. Let's move on, <laughs> shall we? Because we, I think this is only going in one direction. Oh, um, oh, hang on, I've got another one. Oh, Jake, Jake on. says, Where thanks, is it, Peter? Holtie, this is for you. <laughs> thanks for smacking me in the nether regions during a pre-match warm-up with the ball in League One. You had a great laugh out of that. Yeah. That's, um, what, I missed the target? Sorry, I should have done it in the voice. Thanks for smacking me in the... <laughs> anyway, you get the idea of that. Um, Was that a why? He just keeps chucking things out. No, there's yeah. just comments right, on Facebook. Okay, we'll go back right. to the whys, yeah. Why Why are Norwich uh, playing so badly and conceding so many goals? That's from somebody in Beckles here. Why, why, why is that? Oh, it's it's not, goalkeeper's kit. Well, yeah, but if it's not that, what is it? I think if they can't get... It's, at the moment, it's the balance between the two. Um, that We can't get the going forward attacking style and being solid I think at times we're very very solid watching it um, don't look like we're going to get broken down but then it's at the detriment the other way and then if you're trying not to play the likes of Wares and Redmond who you're attacking options you go the other way and fall, fall. It, it's just getting the balance at the moment I just don't think they've got the ball from them I think they had a game plan against Spurs the other day and I think a few of the players didn't really get what they were, were, were trying to do and that's not that won't be to do with the manager. I think it's just them them getting told what they're doing and not, not sticking to the game plan. But it's, it's difficult. It's a, I think everyone's got to remember it's a tough, tough league, and, and the games come thick and fast. And you talk about Liverpool, how do you get beat from th three one up at, at home? But until you're then, you, you see the way they move the ball and the, and the pressure that they keep applying and applying on you. You can't really comment. But as I said, it, you've got to take the Liverpool game. Paul Lamp was quite good. That it didn't matter if you got be 4-3 or whatever you just had to take it as a loss it wasn't matter that you nearly won or you performed well you got beat a bit like what Rob said you got beat and, and you've just got to move on to the next one and keep doing it and, and that's what they've got to keep doing you can't think to yourself it's a five game loss you've got to think to yourself we'll win the next one
that's that's the, the mindset, isn't it? Um, this is a good one from Ian. Why is Kevin Friend a referee? <laughs> good point. He was awful. <laughs> See, other. I didn't think he was too bad. Now, this yeah, is, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, not having it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you, you said it was awful. awful. Well, let's. Yeah, let me just explain something. We, that um, the, the penalty incident, the one that was given, when it happened, when Spurs were given the penalty from which they scored their second goal, me and Paul McVeigh were commentating, and we were quite surprised. We didn't expect a penalty to be given, and then it was. You were watching from the gantry further down. Further from down. So you were actually closer to what happened, and you, we sort of made eye contact, and you nodded your head straight away and said that was a pen. From where I looked, it yeah. was a pen. I, d- I still don't know why Seb's gone to ground, really, but I said from, from where I was, it looked like he'd gone to ground and just pulled pull him down. But I said, that's that's hindsight. You can't see. And if I'm seeing that from up there, and he's in the region, he's, he's just only got one view. I think, we, I think we all know he got that one wrong, but... I didn't think it was that bad in the game. I think he's done those an absolute favour just before half time. Malumbu got robbed of the ball. It wasn't even a foul, I don't think. And um, they, were, they would have been clean through with like literally a minute to go. So yeah. I didn't think it was that bad. I think everyone I think was all over. Two penalties. Yeah, if you're giving that penalty on Basong, I think Naismith was hauled to the ground yes, twice. Yeah, when I, I think, think he was wearing for you know, The linesman was watching as well. And that's the, uh, unbelievable. I'm still speechless from it, really. But if you give one soft one, you've, you've got you uh, but you can't, they, they you can't, can't do that, though. You can't, but the was thing is, that that with Neil Smith's one, I'd have done exactly the same, but I'd have probably gone down a bit quicker. No, that is the thing. I was going to come on to that point. That, that, that is a, I know people don't like talking about it, and they say it's cheating and all that, but the as a striker, the art of falling in the penalty area and making it look convincing, diving. There, there's an art to it, isn't there? No, it's not diving. If you feel the contact and it is a foul... Trying to show that to the referee, yeah, you're supposed to be actually tripped. Yeah, to get, you can't. But if you, yeah, I know it's saying, a foul, yeah. isn't it? If someone makes I mean, contact. If so you get made contact. It's like the one I'd done against Southampton a few years ago. His little face. <laughs> <in. Yeah. laughs> it's a very similar thing. It wasn't really much contact. There was a, there was contact, yeah. but I was always going down because it was ninety third minute. I was knackered. It's a shame I missed the pen. But yeah, we I was going to say that. Yeah. Well, but, sorry, but I that, only missed one, Rob. Don't get me wrong. But, but that's the, it. The one against Sheffield United as well. Yeah, that was brilliant. You but, upset then? Yeah, he doesn't like, he don't like it. Do <laughs> but, but, but there is an art to it, to, to actually pointing out to a referee you've been fouled without making it look ridiculous. Yeah. There, there is something in that, isn't there? There is, but I just thought the only other day, I thought, I actually thought he might give it, but he, he didn't. But I didn't think he was that bad in the game. I didn't think he'd give that much that wrong, really, I think. But it's always a way, and it once one happens, it goes down that route. I've got a brilliant text here, Chris. This Go is on. one of my favourite texts ever. It says, the snake's pit is the stand for retired hooligans. Some of them are still hissing idiots and need to grow up. <laughs> and that's from Terry from the Snake Pit. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, maybe he's counting himself in amongst all that lot, I don't know. Uh, let's, um, the, the Dad's Army film is out uh, this week, isn't it, Rob? You know all about yeah, the films. Yeah, I've seen that. You've seen it, have you? Well, I've seen the trailer seen, of it. You've yeah. seen the trailer for it's it. It's supposed to be so, pretty average, I reckon. I'm really good about that. So, anyway, so we thought... It's not a film review show. Uh, we thought the old gang's... The old gang's back together. Yeah. So we thought we'd celebrate the return of Dad's Army <laughs> by talking about Blackburn Rovers. Because <laughs> Paul Lambert... Elliot Ward, yeah. Simeon Jackson, Grant Hall. Oh, no, Elliot, sorry, Elliot, Bennett, yeah, yeah. Elliot Bennett, they're all, aren't they? They're the, old, the old gang's back together. Is it going to be as good as it was in the old days at Blackburn Rovers with all those Norwich players? We've been speaking to the man who covers uh, Blackburn uh, for uh, BBC Radio Lancashire. He's called Andy Bays, and we're asking him whether it's, uh, whether it's good having the old gang back together. You're about right. Just wondering whether uh, Grant Holt will be next when he, when he left Wigan last week. We did wonder. Um, but, uh, no, you, you're about right, and... Uh, and, and the one thing that Paul said about them as soon as they arrived at the club was that I can rely on these people. That is why they're here. I know that they'll give me everything. And and maybe that was a, a bit of a dig at some players at the club who perhaps he's felt haven't done that while he's been there so far. Well, Holt, he's, uh, we'll be listening to this because he's on the show tonight. Would you would you like him at Blackburn? Do you think the fans would enjoy it? I mean, we, we, we all love Holt. He's an absolute legend here. I don't think you can have enough forwards, particularly when you're a football club who... who don't score goals particularly Blackburn have scored less goals than they've played games they've just sold their 11 goal leading goal scorer um, so there is certainly a position for somebody to, to really take that mantle on I know they've got Danny Graham in now they've got Simeon Jackson Tony Watts there are some um, choices up there already but I think most managers would tell you wouldn't they if, if they could have four or five senior strikers around the place that they'd certainly take them oh, well, well we'll put that to Grant Holt don't worry he'll be listening to this um, <laughs> so with, I'm just interested in Paul Lambert um, is it a bit like uh, only fools and horses and the, the, the jury in the ward does he go back to well when I was at Norwich does he, does he look upon that with, with fond memories 
Not really. There's never really been a mention of, of any of his previous clubs when, when he talks to us in interviews, apart from when he makes signings and he knows them from old. I mean, there are people saying, well, he spent eight, nine months out of the game. Why didn't he spend that looking at players that are perhaps new to him instead of going back to what he knows? But I think we all know from football, don't we? If, if people have impressed you before and know what it's like to get out of the division, which Elliot Ward, Elliot Bennett, Simeon Jackson do, then... Why not go for them? And, and let's be honest as well, they're not, they've not cost a fortune, which is pretty much the job at Blackburn Rovers at the moment. Transfer embargo's over, just about. Uh, they've just recouped a lot of money for Jordan Rhodes, but then again, they, they spent a lot on him in the first place. So there's not a great deal of money swilling around in the coffers, so he's gone for what he knows and, and knows he's got pretty much value for money with the three, I think. He's a bit tainted, poor old Paul, after the Villa job, and we always stick up for him in Norwich, I certainly do anyway, because we all regard him as an absolute hero when he was manager here. Are the Blackburn fans going to be patient with him, do you think? Because it's obviously going to be a long-term project. Well, they're looking at it now, and, and the, the league performances have been disappointing, largely, since December. Um, they were, at one stage, two points outside of the playoff places after Paul's three wins in his first four games. Uh, but they've not won since, and that's well before Christmas now, in the league, that is. They've lost championship matches. They've won a couple of games in the FA Cup against League Two opposition. Uh, Simeon Jackson was terrific last week at, at Oxford, as was Elliot Ward, actually. Both of them were excellent. Elliot Bennett's not hit the ground running at all. He, he's not performed at all in a Blackburn shirt yet, which I think has come as a bit of a disappointment to the fans as much as anything else. But... I think the fans are realistic enough, lads, to think that you know that there's so much to do at Blackburn, and it always seems to be that they've had five managers in three and a half years. So, the problems that Paul's inherited are not going to be sorted overnight. Even though he's now got some money in, where maybe he's freed up some wages as well to think loan market will do something, and then next season, providing Blackburn are still in the Championship, which they're looking nervously over their shoulders about. Let's not forget then Paul Lambert can really shape this squad into his own. They've gone from playoff contenders to relegation candidates in the, just in the time we've been talking to you, Andy, which is the way the championship is. We remember it well. One final point, Elliot Bennett. You leave him alone. I bet Blackburn have never had a nicer bloke <laughs> playing for them. He's a terrific lad. He, he really... I, I can't speak highly enough of the lad. Unfortunately, it's just not happened whatsoever. Um, well, they've just lost the nicest lad, Jordan Rhodes. Blimey. Uh, he, He's he not nice than Elliot Bennett. Really? No, he no, was called son-in-law no. material and all no, that kind no, of thing, George. He's switch, got switches that on his CV. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Of course he has, yeah. <laughs> Andy Bays, he, he covers uh, Blackburn Rovers games for uh, our colleagues at BBC Radio Lancashire. Who wants to ask Grant Holt the inevitable and obvious question after that then? Come on, Rob, you've been asking some good Are questions. Are you going today. to Blackburn, Grant Holt? <laughs> or would you like to go to Blackburn? Would you like to be reunited? Hang on, no, Paul don't worry, Steve Claridge. <laughs> one question. Come he's, on. he's asked right. one good yeah, question. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Work why out. would you want to get a platform? <laughs> no, right. Because Elliot Bennett is a nice guy. He's a nice he guy. Is, yeah. Yeah. It's as I said. It's a little bit. You do know the manager, and I know exactly what he does, and I've been with him before, and I know he works. So on that on that front, of course, you'd want to go and work with him, and you'd, you'd want to want to be part of what he's doing there. So, but as I said, they've already got a lot of forwards there, and and, and he knows what he's got. As I said, he knows where I am. Um, and I said I want him to do well. Of course, I want him to do well. I, I think he was really dis disappointed from a Villa in terms of when he went there. He got sold a, a dream, dream, and I think turned into a nightmare. Yeah, I think it did be, with the budget that got slashed and the players he had to sell and and the way the club went didn't really work. Of I don't think it exactly what it was that he got told. But I said Blackburn now. It, it is. It's a good club, and I think it's it's, it's running away where it's a lot better than it was. I think when the first came in, it was all over the place and, and stuff so so has he, has he has he called you yet i've spoke to him personally but not in not in terms of i just had the chat so yeah that was the yeah, after, what do you, after you, after you must say would you fancy it no this was on a, i just have to have done my knee so just oh i see just a chat, chat, chat yeah. but yeah. he's what with you make an interesting point about his time at villa which people look back on as he didn't do very well there but with where they are now that makes him look better doesn't it because yeah. that didn't happen while he was there no that was it and uh, they all they were all flirting with it but it, it didn't happen and i I think it was something along the lines of about 57 million or some of budget they, they slashed off when he went there. Which is, you go in with one thing and you're getting told to slash 57 million off your budget, it tells you the kind of players and the kind of measure of people they had there. So it's going to be very, very difficult. And I think he, he tried to go with the eighth of what he'd done at Norwich uh, and get young lads in and, and try and get them working for him. And it didn't really happen with the quality that they expected. And 
as I said, I went there and, and it's a massive expectation when you, you turn up. I don't think people realise how big it is to get there. Uh, let's just go through some of the messages that are coming in here. One says, uh, two areas that Norwich need to address. Fitness. On Tuesday, the Norwich players looked dead on their feet compared with Spurs. Uh, some of their team had played three days earlier. Also, the amount of goals conceded in the last 15 minutes of games. And defending, we need a settled back four. He's constantly changing the whole team. The most successful teams are unchanged and are full of running for 90 minutes. Did you spot any of this, Grant? Would you say fitness is an issue? You're nodding your head, Danny, as a Norwich fan. You... I sort of think agree on the pressing thing. I think we do sit off teams a lot. I think earlier in the season, we did press and get in teams' faces. I think it was quite successful, but then we lost to Newcastle, and it seems to sort of scarred him a bit. Yeah, that that was a big defeat, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what you think about that whole team. I mean, Ryan Bennett, someone you played with, someone you know well. I always bang the Ryan Bennett drum. Is he unlucky not to be in there? He, he seems to have been forgotten a bit. Yeah, he has. He has been forgotten a bit. Um, yeah, it's, it's difficult for them at the moment. There's, they're bringing players in, and obviously we've seen Pinto, the right back, is very, very good going forward. But I think everyone in the in the stand the other day knew that he was going to get scooped down the line and left foot and, and three times he, he got done with that. So I think you can see him is very much an attacking full back. Um, but it's difficult. What do you do? You, you've got to keep changing around when you're not winning games. You've got to mix and match and move people around. And the left backs change, the centre halves have changed, the right back midfields change. I didn't particularly think the two sitters did, helped the other day. They're in there to to protect and, and shut things up, and they didn't really do that in the first half. So that would be di disappointing for for both of them. But as I said, you can't you can't knock the way Alex Te Alex Tate do. He does his job and does it well. But the other night, I, I didn't think that was Alex at his best. And he won't play on Saturday because he got his tenth booking of the season in the end of the game there. And that was something Alex Neal wasn't happy about. Rob, you heard what he said afterwards. He yeah, was, I mean, he was quite right. With him. Yeah, yeah it, a bit, as Holt he said, it's how he plays his game. We, we you know we all love Alex Tate. He's a he's a brilliant lad and he's a good player for Norwich. And I think if you take Holtie, if you take that away from a player, the, the, the sort of on the edge with the tackles, it with, takes a lot away, doesn't it? With him, you can't you can't take that away from him because he makes that many tackles and he does cover ground that much. He was lucky in the first half when he ran ten yards to have a go at the referee that he didn't get booked <laughs> just for doing that. But that's him. He, he is like that. He, he wears his heart on his sleeve, Alex, and he gets around. And when you're someone who's doing that job and you're making a lot of tackles, going into a lot of stuff, you're going to get them. But I think it's the little silly ones he's probably been annoyed with over the last. 10 bookings. I think the other thing I wanted to mention to you, maybe it's just something that didn't get made a lot of, but when we spoke to Stephen Naismith after the Liverpool game on, on BBC Radio Norfolk, he was the player they put up to interview after that in the immediate aftermath. That was his debut. And he said one of the problems was that the players, the Norwich players, didn't communicate with each other enough, didn't talk enough during a game, which I, th I thought was interesting to hear somebody say that. And it's something that, as a fan, as a commentator, whoever, you don't really get to see that. You don't know what's going on. But that's so important, isn't it, during a game, the, the, the talking to each other and yeah, all that. Yeah, it's so important. It's pretty similar to when I went to um, Huddersfield. We had the same thing when I went there. We had Mark Hudson at the back, who does not shut up. But from there onwards, they didn't have anyone to speak. The, the more young lads that didn't really do it and didn't. They had Naki Wells, who's a great player, up front scores goals, but he's not really that one to be vocal and talking all around. They had a, a miscommunication. And I think that is quite big to try and get that consistency all the way through. And it is difficult, I said, when you bring more players and you bring more influx in, but that's something you've got to learn because everyone needs to be going in the right direction. You can see at the weekend the other day, one's going, one's not close, and then one's turning around saying something else. I've seen Neil Smith and having a, a little bite at the, at the weekend, and, and that's probably what he gives you. But That's what you need, yeah. yeah well, you need I, I covered a non-league game for Radio Norfolk last Saturday at Roxham, and when you're there and you're that close to the pitch, Danny, you'll know about this, You, for somebody like me who doesn't play football, you, you really then see how much people talk to each other during a game, and you, you don't get that sense in the crowd, do you? You don't. I just think we've not had a... I'm not just saying it because he's next to me, but I don't think we've had a leader since he's left. Uh, but it's not, even, it's not even that, is it? Not even a leader, it's just the communication. You don't have to be a leader, you don't have to No, be... you don't have to be a leader, it's just communication to, so everyone knows that when I'm going, that you got you better come, because then someone will turn around and, and dictate it. But I said, you can't have people not talking and, and letting people give information and knowing where they are. And then, because it, it's the best thing in the world if someone keeps telling you exactly what they're doing. It was brilliant for me when he used to play with Wes, because any time a ball came near me, he just told me exactly where he was, straight away, so I knew before I was even going for it, where he was inside, drop it off, I'm going, or whatever. And Brilliant. It makes things a lot easier for you. We can't, he doesn't like talking to us, does he? Not personally, he just doesn't like doing interviews. So we find that Wes as a talker is a difficult thing for us to get our heads around. But yeah. you can hear his, hear his little voice, do you, like a jockey? <laughs> yeah, he's, so, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> listen, don't be fooled by him, because he, he will tell you, and he will blast you. If you're not doing something he wants you to do, he will certainly tell you. He's not a big talker, he doesn't really want to come on those radios and do the TV and stuff, unless he absolutely has to, then he, he will. 
he's done a couple under Alex Neil though now. I think when he absolutely has to. Has to. Yeah. When he absolutely has to, <laughs> yeah. That's why I, I think at the time he'd rather go and score two goals, someone get out tricks so he doesn't have to speak to anyone, just yeah. go on. But that's what he is. He is very, he likes to keep himself to himself. Yeah. But on the pitch yeah, and in training and stuff, he's got something to say. I'll gladly give you his opinion quickly. Well, we've only got a couple of minutes to go. Danny, uh, Grant Holt has said he thinks Norwich are st- uh, going to stay up, they're going to be fine. Are you as confident? I was. There was a gap there. <laughs> was. Was it all? Yeah. Just the last I was just about to check his mic. Is it still on? Yeah, I was. Last couple of games have put the wind up me a bit. Uh, but I, I do trust the manager. So, yeah, I think we will. Rob, how are you feeling? Yeah, we'll, we'll still win. stay up. Come yeah. on now. Let, let's dig in. We, we, it's a massive game on Saturday. It's a World Cup final. I'm really looking forward to it. You know, they're going to be up for it. We're going to be up for it. We will win that game. Don't panic, Norwich fans. We'll be fine. And just... just I don't want to keep. It's a cliche. Get behind your team, but it is all about that. The, the, the lads need you, and we just don't. stop moaning about Russell Martin as well. He's a legend. He's a captain. He Correct. lifted that trophy at Wembley. Come on, yeah, all right. He's not the best centre half in the world, but he's the best right back at Norwich. Get him back in that team, Alex Neil. Let's see whether he plays on Saturday. Um, well, wherever your next move is, Holty, thanks for being with us for this week. Thank and, you. And uh, we'll see whether you get the call from Mr. Lambert or somebody <laughs> else. You and all your old mates, Danny. Good luck to you as well. Thank you. And uh, hopefully your 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 mind will be put at rest by what Norwich do this weekend. Fingers crossed. We'll be live at Villa Park on Saturday uh, Saturday Sport from 2 o'clock all that's left for the scrimmage tonight thanks for all your questions um, and all your whys but all that's left is for Glenn Roder to say his traditional goodbye Ta-da! Norfolk News Norfolk Life This is BBC Radio Norfolk BBC News at 7 o'clock. This is Sarah Loudon. Renewed fighting in Syria is thought to have prompted a new wave of people leaving the country. Turkey says tens of thousands of refugees are heading for its border to escape air attacks in near Aleppo. World leaders have been meeting in London to raise money.